How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm gonna go and do this contract uh, called Restoring the Water Tower 4. It's doing another water tower but there's a couple of reasons I needed slash wanting to do this one. Um, it gives me a chance I'm gonna try and take two trailers with one truck. There was that. I've also got to go and build one of these bloody consumables um, and also it unlocks some of the last contracts as well. So the first part I'm gonna need to follow the road along to the Burn Forest map, come out of that gateway get some long planks from the um, sawmill, grab metal beams and rolls from the warehouse, come back to Albany River, take it to this warehouse so I can convert uh, most of it into a consumable, and then take it over to that gateway, travel back across to Burned Forest, and then take it to the, uh, the water tower. Which, to be honest, out of all the water towers, seems to be kind of in the middle of nowhere. I don't really know if I'll end up using it, because the road it's on is kind of... Once you go down that road, you kind of end up on the road, I think, that loops around in the quarry, or you're going to have to kind of double back on yourself to um, get back out of that kind of section. And the other water tower on Burn Forest just seems like it'll be a bit of a better option, although admittedly, still not the smoothest. You're kind of going to have to go out your way a little bit. Funnily enough, earlier, just before I was uh, doing this video, I just quickly tested out a curiosity. I've tried it before, but I just wanted to see if anything had fixed... Uh, regarding it. I got a dolphin and a trailer, a water trailer, filled them both up with water, took them through the burned forest gateway. Um, it drained... I think it's the trailer that it drained. Or no, actually, sorry. It might have been the trailer kept its water, but it drained the dolphin, and then I transferred the water from the trailer over to the dolphin, went to go back through the gateway, and then I got blue screened again. Which, yeah, for some reason, I, my vehicles as far as I'm aware, are still appearing on the map when I look at everything, but um, yeah, the blue screen frequency has kind of dialed itself up a bit again. The other night, in fact, yeah, it was this mission. Um, I got blue screened about eight times doing this, and just the amount of times that to keep going on, I kind of got used to it blue screening, so for the most part, I didn't really lose much footage. Um, if anything, I kind of got bits of double footage where I'd obviously like, once I load the game back up, it loads me back a bit to when it last saved. Um, but yeah, it was just eating so much time, like keep going back to the main menu, loading the game up. Just couldn't quite fit it all in. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, for this one as well, I wanted to take the Taker out, and uh, this, in the end, worked out as quite a good reason uh, to take it out, because it was a lot of, like, head-scratching trying to work out the best way to plan this mission. Because, again, for the consumables, you need long planks, which are four slot, uh, metal beams, and metal rolls. So the metal beams are two slot, metal rolls are one slot, you need one of each. So that's seven slots of cargo in total. Which means, really, I was kind of looking at potentially taking the Paystar 5600 again, because it's got the three slot sideboard, take a four slot ramped flatbed, and then you can get all the materials for the consumables. Um, but, just the way it's panned out, I've already grabbed... Uh, the metal rolls from like the warehouse that's nearby so I've got none left there so I'm going to have to go on like an extra journey to get the metal rolls at which point there's no point in me grabbing one metal roll to build the consumable and then I'm going to need another two metal rolls to finish the mission but if I wanted to grab them all I need more than seven slots of cargo so I was scratching my head wondering what to do thinking do I want to do a road train do I kind of do a road train up to this gateway and send one truck off to the rail yard or something um, yeah, in the end I kind of decided it seemed like the best way, and it was pretty fun um, trying this out with the trailers, and I actually think this works better than it used to in the way, because I believe they have tweaked the trailers and the ramp flatbed's a little bit heavier, so for the most part when you're towing it along like this, it kind of has enough rolling resistance that it mostly keeps the winch cable kind of taut and the trailers kind of then following you along. It, this was possible way back when, but the ramp flatbed was so light that as soon as you decelerated a bit it would just float and smash into the back of you like you're towing a boat on water or something. It just had no real resistance and then yeah it was quite liable to just jackknife flop over and uh, send your cargo everywhere. But it actually seemed to work uh, pretty well this time. Um, yeah, travelling through to that gateway, funnily enough it blue screened me there so I already had to uh, load it back up. Yeah, for this one I'm going to cut through there, go get the long planks, go to that warehouse and get the I'm going to get three lots of metal rolls and one metal beam, and then, uh, yeah, 
kind of make my way back to the road and follow that back down to the gateway. And uh, yeah, by the way, like with this setup, um, in total, yeah, I've now got nine slots of cargo I can use. And to be honest, I've also got like a specific way that I want to load the cargo and everything because basically, I kind of worked out for the first part of this mission, I'm going to need a ramped, uh, sorry, the step deck trailer really. What I could have done, even though I just explained a minute ago, needing nine lots of cargo, I've got a crane on this Tager as well, so if I wanted to, I could kind of hold the long planks on the crane, and that obviously saves four slots of cargo, and I don't mind doing it with, I don't mind doing it anyway, if I really needed to, I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, but for, you know, the long planks swinging around is a little bit kind of... I don't want to say unrealistic, because I don't know if I'm exactly going for peak realism anyway. But you know what I mean. It's blagging the system a little bit. <laughs> um, and I wanted to see if there was, like, what other ways I could work out. Because I wanted to bring this taker, I couldn't have, like, a step deck. Uh, sorry, again, I keep getting my words mixed up. A sideboard. Because uh, it wouldn't let me have the triple combo of, like, the crane, the sideboard, and the trailer. So, yeah, hence why I settled, really, on the, uh, the crane and the step deck. But then... To finish the mission, once I've got everything cashed in, I'm only going to have two metal rolls and a consumable, and by then the consumable is only one slot of cargo, so I'm only going to have three slots of cargo in total. Again, another potential reason why the Paystar 5600 was looking like quite a good option, and I still would say it is, other than with utmost certainty you'll run out of fuel probably doing this mission with the uh, Paystar. Obviously, take a goddamn horse with you, he'll, uh, he'll solve your problems. It's funny on this map, really. Well, I mean, we've got the fuel station light, but it's really near to the Albany River garage. And obviously, once you spawn from there, or even if you didn't, you can spawn trailers there and refuel yourself. Um, so, yeah, again, there's another reason on this map and phase in general to scatter a few maintenance trailers around, because, yeah, like I say, once you set off from the garage, which for me anyway, I just kind of start most missions there, because it's where you can build a truck and set it up for the, uh, the mission you want to do. I've only used, you know, like, 10-15 litres or something by the time I uh, got down the road and going past the fuel station. Uh, oh no, I was just going to say there's a Paystar 5600, it's not. It's that. One of those Wolfpack trucks, whatever it's called. NT... I don't know. 1430, I think that one is. It's the one with the two drop axles, not the 1424s, the short wheelbase one. Um, yeah, going along, driving here, got the long planks. For what it's worth, the reason I went say this way and got the long planks first is one because I know turning around in this yard is a pain in the ass and as you'll see that's a pretty good example even though the step deck trailer is fairly easy to turn around the uh, ramp flatbed as you'll see does tip had I had cargo on that I would have gone everywhere and uh, secondly just in general like this I only needed to get the uh, the long planks from here and as it's one piece of cargo worst case if I did tip it's only one piece of cargo to load back on and for now at least it's uh yeah, the way I'm doing the cargo, the reason I've specifically put the long planks on the step deck trailer is I'm also then when I go now to get the metal beams and planks, uh, the rolls, sorry, I'm going to put the one set of metal rolls on my step deck trailer and then two metal rolls and one metal beam on my ramp flatbed. And the reason why is because then when I take it to cash all the stuff in to build the consumable, I'll completely empty the step deck trailer and then I can kind of abandon that for the second half of the mission and just stick to the ramp flatbed. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of how I ended up with both trailers, really. I know I'd have to start this mission with the step deck, but I kind of figured, yeah, the step deck's a little bit overkill for just three lots of cargo for the last half of the mission, and not that the, this step deck trailer's terrible, but I just kind of figured, in the scheme of things, this ramp flatbed is probably going to be the better option. For the route I'd chosen as well, there's a few little bumps and hills and that to climb over, which uh, obviously the step deck sits pretty low, so you kind of... It scrapes on a lot of things. It was pretty good bringing the old, uh, the old Tager back out. These are still a good combo, Tager and Life. I've been eating this map up for breakfast since, I don't know, <laughs> 2020. Can't believe it's already 2023. I don't like nearly halfway through 2023 as well. Flying by. A little bit wobbly there. I have to say, it's, right. it's pretty sad, but me, uh, me granddad did pass away. Well, last, well, not last night now, for me, uh, Sunday night. 
so yeah, bless him. He hung in there, he did well. He was out. He was just really ill and he was getting weaker and stuff and it's definitely sad but we kind of knew that it was on its way really because yeah he was already sort of in bed just not very well at all and it wasn't really getting better he was uh, losing a bit of weight and stuff not really eating or anything so yeah it took a little while where he got like a bit sort of sleepy and just sort of fading in and out of sleepiness in his bed for a little bit but yeah he uh, he did he passed away last night but he my uh, my mum was there, my uncle's there, he's his son. Um, I'd been down kind of, I was sort of there at nights really, sitting with them all night and then either my mum or my uncle would go around in the day. So yeah, he had people around him and uh, he wanted to pass away at home, that was his plan, that's what he got, he got his wish. So he did it all his way and uh, yeah, bless him though, he's, he's uh, yeah, no longer with us. Which I'm, I'm obviously definitely gutted. It's my granddad, but I'm glad he's not in any pain or anything anymore. If there is anything going on afterwards, it'll be back with my grandma now. And um, yeah, he was 88. He had a, a an interesting life, a long old life. And uh, yeah, like I say, it's definitely sad, but I hope he's uh, yeah doing well still. And yeah, when I got to here, um, as I said, I'm getting three metal rolls and one metal beams. I did I part the trailer like that specifically, um, just so I can line them back up when I reverse up to this trailer and reattach it. I can just stick a winch back onto the ramped flatbed and we're good to go. And yeah, like I say, this is nine pieces of cargo and a goddamn professional and a crane. And to the Tager's credit, this is one of the reasons I wanted to bring it out, because most, if not all, the trucks are feeling like weaker today by compared to what they used to be. Um, yeah, this Tager's a good old classic. It used to be pretty much the daddy of the game, certainly one of the main contenders, probably always in like the top three trucks. It's sort of a bit of preference might swing you either way on a few other trucks. Um, and yeah, taking it out doing this mission, it was uh, I was pretty impressed with how well it was like pulling these trailers. There was a few bits obviously where it slowed me down a little bit. For whatever reason, I went with... Um, chain ties I think this time which yeah no regrets they were doing fine I've, again I mean it was the funny enough it was this Tager when I was doing the tyre testing videos it was this Tager and these chains that put in the best time I could get and I couldn't beat it in the muds but there wasn't really like I said on this phase as there's no snow or anything it's not as desperate need change just every now and then yeah I like them they've done me well like I said there's not really anywhere I can't go with chained Whereas thanks to ice and stuff, there is a few places you can't go with mud, so... But yeah, they were doing alright, even uh, with this, like I say, pulling nine slots of cargo. And yeah, in the end, because I needed... Like, I needed one lot of metal rolls to do the consumables. Obviously I need another two to finish the whole mission in total. But on my way to the water tower, once I've got the consumable... I had a couple of different options for getting two metal rolls, so I kind of could have cut that journey out for the most part. But like I said, the warehouse on Albany River that I near enough go past, there was like a little lane to drive down, um, that used to have metal rolls there, but I've used them all. If that did have metal rolls, I could have just gone to the sawmill, grabbed those long planks, and then basically done a U-turn back to the gateway. It would have been quicker, um, but yeah, the only other options at this point would be on Albany River... I could drive over to the rail yard and grab metal rolls from there, but then, like I say, at that point, I may as well grab metal beams and everything as well. But then I've got the metal. Uh, then I've got to go and get the long planks, and then it's just a shitload of cargo <laughs> to figure out how to haul around. I suppose, really, if you wanted to, you could do an eight-slot trailer. Well, then again, I mean, I've used, I believe, the uh, all nine slots. So yeah, even an eight-slot trailer, you'd still. I suppose you could wear one piece of cargo like a hat. That wouldn't be too bad if you got the crane as well. But I wouldn't really fancy taking the 8-slot trailer. Already it would have been a bit of a nightmare. I mean, imagine going into that uh, yard where I got the long planks from. I'd... I'm sure it would be possible somewhere, but just turning that trailer around in there, it, you'd probably end up getting it sort of locked against the building and possibly stuff on the other side. I've parked a few trailers and trucks and that kind of cluttering that yard up a bit, which wouldn't help. Um, yeah, in the end though, like I say, I found this pretty cool because the Tiger was uh, doing well. 
the trailers were actually, yeah, the ramped flatbed wasn't being a complete troll. Like, this was actually pretty doable. And kind of nice, yeah, like, say, if I'd done a road train, I mean, really, if I did a road train, all I'd have now is, just say for the sake of argument, another Tega that I'd be towing behind me, and that'd just be attached to the ramped flatbed. But then the game has, like, a speed limit that it forces you to stay in when you're in a doing a road train, whereas this, I believe for the most part, is pretty much letting me go for it. I didn't want to take the piss and try and fly up to like 8th gear out of 8th, like down that hill I probably could have, but I think I kept it in high. And yeah, pretty simple drive back to the, uh, back to this gateway, follow the main road along. Another goddamn professional. He's already got his fuel used. And then, yeah, now, see, just get used to it, like, because it keeps blue screening. Now, instead of just travelling through the gateway, I pull up first, save the footage. Funnily enough, I think that was one of the only times it didn't blue screen me going through the gateway. Which I thought it probably would, doing uh, two trailers and all the cargo and everything. But, yeah, it was fine. Did, obviously, the ghost thing where it like, overlays them until you drive back out of it. But, get it attached now. Got to follow the road along to the kind of warehouse thing in the top right hand corner uh, where you can craft stuff well craft consumables and cabins yeah that's the water tower I went to earlier with the dolphin and the trailer and yeah when I travelled to the gateway like I say it's still deleting yeah I'm sure it was the dolphin's water it uh, like just deleted so you can take trailers through gateways but some of the contracts coming up, you've got to take like 4,400 litres to each two locations on Burn Forest, and then one of the other ones is, there's three different lots, but it might be like 3,300 litres or whatever it is. Um, yeah, that's going to take a hell of a long time if you can only haul trailers through the gateway, which means you're basically going to kind of be forced to uh, go to the water towers that are on Burn Forest, which, yeah, are kind of in iffy locations. You'll see at some point going along here, The uh, I'm obviously towing like the hitch of the ramped flatbed and it catches, yeah, there, like, obviously where they've kind of put sections of the bridge. There's just like a tiny little lip between the, uh, the two bits of coding or whatever and even though the ramped flatbed, I'm pulling it along by the hitch but I think just as it wants, it's kind of up to the same speed as me, that's just dangling along, dragging along the floor a bit. And even like what, doing it this way, the uh, the ramped flatbed actually follows you quite nicely. I think because it's got the dolly axle, it's a bit lazy with when it follows you. But that's probably not a bad thing because it probably just adds like a half second to delay into when it follows you. But that just helps it. Like when you're sweeping around a corner, it more does follow like the back of your trailer instead of it trying to really cut in the corners, which helps like yeah, so you don't clip a barrier or something and it just tries to completely flick itself over. Um, yeah, get here though, I, there was a tiny little perfect glitch there, but I did drop the long planks off and the metal. They look like they're both sort of vanished in one. Um, drove around there, thankfully there is like a little car park there, so I've just dropped that trailer off. I unpacked the loaf though before I disconnected the trailer, which is important, at least for me. <laughs> um, yeah, dropped the metal beams off, so now I've got everything, all three materials to craft a consumable, go to the middle menu, craft that, go back to the third menu, Make sure you load it onto your trailer, not like the loading area thing. Uh, yeah, and then like I say, in the end, that's all the cargo you need. Three slots of cargo, technically, for this mission. Um, and I knew I'd have one slot of cargo room left. I mean, look how perfectly the load fits on. What an absolute professional. Of course we're bringing, a lot, bringing them along, not just for fuel, but uh, obviously repairs as well. Because the Tega is good. It keeps a decent pace. One of the... Uh, punishments for keeping a good pace obviously every now and then you can like clip a rock or something and you're going fast enough that it'll completely delete you so i've got to head over to the next gateway i could get to the rail yard and follow the normal road round but you can actually see there's like a little bit of a cut through through the trees and i was just pretty curious to see if it's actually a viable route through or if it's a complete nightmare and um, yeah so setting off i could have done a u-turn in the that warehouse if i really wanted and go back out to the roundabout but I, I don't know, by the time I've turned the trailer around I don't really know if it'd be any quicker anyway. And again, the Tega is handling it just fine in high gear, so ploughing along here. 
connect back up with the main road. Another nice thing, Tega. I'm probably going to need some fuel before I get to the end, but it's got pretty decently sized fuel tank, so I actually... Yeah, you get quite far on this mission. I mean, as well as another option if I wanted to, I suppose I could just drive back down the main road to the fuel station, but again... I don't really like doubling back on myself at the best of times. Every now and then, if you have to a little bit, like I've had to tonight, I suppose, when I drove to Burn Forest. I've come up and down this road once or twice. And then now, by the way, I was driving along here. I've lost the footage, but I put my brakes on now because I forgot for a second if I needed to turn left. And I did a perfect skid and jackknife, but my truck didn't tip. And I was like, that just looked movie perfect. Like, if I had that footage, they'd use it in a trailer. It was that clean. And I was like, oh yeah, that's good footage. And then literally a second later, blue screened me when I was here. I, I didn't tip the cargo or anything. So I loaded it back up. It loaded me back up to that warehouse where I just crafted the uh, consumable. Yeah, I tried once or twice to kind of slam the brakes on and recreate it because it did look pretty good. But to no avail, I kept tipping. Um, yeah, Loaf rescued himself, though. Goddamn horse. Loaded the cargo back on. It was a good little chance to test the other day when I loaded those two cargo containers on my trailer. Um when I was packing the second one it just kept like it wasn't jumping onto the trailer and loading it properly which is the only time it's ever been an issue for me I just stacked that consumable on top of those two metal uh, rolls and it still just completely packed the whole trailer so yeah the, the, the mechanic itself doesn't seem to be messing around there's just something wrong with that cargo container the other day um, yeah so I did have a bit of a crash but in the end I think on that crash anyway the yeah the Tiger didn't tip my trailer did Loaf did a barrel roll. And you can see, I forgot to mention, but in the footage, the loaf kind of tips over to where he wouldn't start his engine. But then at the last second, he just kind of wiggles his way back to where he was tipped enough to fire his engine up. And got himself out of there. And then, yeah, like I said, I've got to head over to the other gateway now. I've got two options. I could go to the normal gateway I've just been through, but I'm going to have to cut across a load of the burned forest map then. Or on Albany River cut across this map and then there's not as much to cut across on Burn Forest. Kind of pick your poison on that one. It's gonna you're gonna have to go cross mapping on the uh, one of them. Which I just kinda of figured in the end, as for this mission, I've sort of done a bit of off road rallying on the uh Burn Forest for the most part, collecting the materials, so Yeah, I quite like cutting through this way as well. It is near the one of the gateways. And even though it looks a little bit rough, it's pretty fair going through there. It's not too tippy, it's not too awkward with, like, lack of grip. There's rocks there, but it actually climbs up them pretty well. So, yeah, it's a pretty good little section to cut through. And then just by the time you connect back to, I don't know, the main road, sort of using the word main road loosely, um, yeah, when you connect back to this dirt road, it's kind of, you're already, like, halfway over to the rail station thing, really. going on there. And at this point I can see the fuel's pretty low. I was just kind of curious to see how far I would have actually got before I end up uh, needing to refuel. So you get little things like that because the Tega keeps a good speed. I took damage running over that tree. A lot of trucks probably wouldn't but a lot of trucks would probably be going a bit slower as well. I I wouldn't say the Tega's weak. It just yeah, it sort of gets up to up to enough stuff in like the advanced special gearboxes, and that's one thing sort of handy with them going a bit slower. You take less damage like that. I don't know what the hell the trailer decided to almost tip over on there. Got me uh, my heart going a little bit there. I couldn't really see a particular rock that was like forcing it to tip, but it thought about it. I think the old loaf, a bit of loaf training in action. He saved the day, no doubt. He always does. Um, yeah, got to about here. Fuel was getting pretty low. I assume it's starting to do that sort of spluttery, annoying thing where you've still got 10 litres, but I don't mind the spluttering, <laughs> but you only get like, it literally just reduces it to practically nothing. It'd be nice if there was like a little second gap between the splutters so you could actually just get a little bit of engine power and maybe limp home in some cases. Um, yeah, get it juiced up though, swap that roof rack over. It's funny as well, because I've said a little while ago, and I still think it'd be a cool thing, like, if you could get cargo in this game, 
that was like one slot cargo but it's like fuel for example that you could then use as fuel or you know you'd almost make like your trailer modular where you could load say two slots of fuel one slot of repairs and one slot of say spare tires or something so you could build a round flatbed trailer to have like four different types of spares repairs and tires on it and uh, yeah in the end really we've had him the whole time because we've got them horse you can load them on the trailers I reckon I'd fit I mean, yeah, three loafs on this trailer. That's like 900 repair points, 12 tyres, 600 fuel. That's uh, quite a big load, really. <laughs> That's what she said, of course. Um, yeah, that'd make then like the ramp flatbed kind of uh, its own sort of maintenance trailer. And on top of that, not only is the loaf kind of like cargo that's got spares, repairs and tyres, but you can drive that cargo around. I'm surprised the Tager wouldn't make it up this hill. I climbed up here the other day, I'm sure, I think one of them was the Dolphin, and that made it up there without going out a high. And I believe I did with Dan as well. But yeah, the uh, the Tager, for whatever reason, just ran out of juice quite at the end. Maybe I had a bit of a different angle running up. I know I've been that way like once or twice. It's quite easy to cut through there, and then yeah, there's a bit of a hill to jump up on the rail tracks, but works out pretty nicely. And then now you see the trailer started to drift. I wasn't really looking. I was looking at the trailer, watching the the loaf and his little lean angle going on. Um, yeah, so I smashed into some pipes, which again the Tager took it well, but that's the sort of thing where I could have deleted it. There's a few other trucks paced out. Where is your loaf? Be a drop and give me twenty scenario if uh, it was like an army inspection. I wonder where his loaf has got to. He does get up to a lot. I'll give him that. Um, yeah. So instead of just going the normal road to the gateway, you kind of cut through here, go past the train, and you can see there is actually little tyre tracks running up here, and to be fair, it's actually a pretty kind of smooth, easy track to go down. There was a, one of those burned trees there, which is a bit of a troll, because they just hook onto your trucks like mad. But yeah, for the most part, it's actually, yeah, pretty doable. I mean, the other normal route you can go is actually quite boggy mud. I think here, yeah, it made me... I had to go back down to auto here. And I think I clipped that tree a little bit. Which I believe it probably would have made me go to auto anyway. Because funnily enough it was like there. It was forcing me to stay in first gear. And when you get all these sections on these different maps. The way they seem to have coded it. Where it won't let you get out of first gear. I think that is just their relatively lazy way to be fair. But of definitely guaranteeing you won't be able to use high gear in that section because high gear just doesn't work you, don't, you haven't got enough revs and everything from first gear and then yeah there was only like a little patch though and then I got straight back into high gear and flew along there and then you pop out at the top of this hill which that hill's fairly steep and the boggy mud at the bottom of it is kind of pretty restrictive and slow so yeah it was a cool little shortcut in the end it's I don't know how much time it actually saves or anything but still nice to know uh, yeah, got to that gateway, funnily enough, it blue screened me again. And when I eventually got through there, I realised here, there's Dan and Loaf that I sent the other day to see how much faster it was than the Derry Special. And like I say, it made the run from Albany Garage to here in nine minutes, not about 18 and a half was the Derry. And then, yeah, now, I, what I should do is go along that normal road, but we've got this hill again, which, because I tried climbing it the other day in the Derry, I was curious to see if the Tager, if it, you know, if they're even in the same ballpark or what's going on. That's the water tower I've got to drop the stuff off to. So it's not that far to travel once you're on this map, if you come out at this gateway anyway. If I did do the other gateway, I'd end up really cutting across and popping up here and joining this road anyway. Um, yeah, at this point, I know from the loaf alone I had enough fuel to make uh, to get to the end of this mission, but I got a bit more fuel from that maintenance trailer because I'm going to now be stubborn and I know cause myself a bit of hassle trying to get up this steep, awkward hill. I know I was going to burn extra fuel. So it was one of them, I was like, well, while I'm here, I kind of want to see. I can always edit out the footage if it ends up being a complete disaster and all the rest of it. But yeah, just uh, to save a bit of time, I was like, I'll go and get fuel now, because otherwise I'll only... If I do take too long, I'll end up just dispatching the loaf, sending back up the hill to get some fuel. And yeah, because I've, like I say, I've climbed up, I climbed up this hill with the Derry 15C special, the new one. Uh, on the exploration video and it just about got up there on its own I did it a week ago whenever it was with um quite like trailer full of cargo and all the rest of it and it was struggling like crazy 
Um, yeah, so I was just curious because I think the Derry 15C is a little bit kind of meh for what it could have been. I think they could have made it better than it was. So uh, yeah, I mean I've got a trailer full of cargo now. There's certainly no advantages with uh, this Tager. It's got a crane on it. It's got everything against it. It's even got a loaf on the trailer. Although, as I said, he is weightless unless he needs to provide weight. He knows what he's doing. And uh, already I'd say oh, it managed to climb further than the Derry unaided. It's actually doing alright, really. It was when I got to here, the front left axle is kind of clipping on that rock there, and it's there's just like a little lip to it, because there's no just no grip at all on the rock, it just can't really bite down onto it and uh, get me to climb up a bit more. It was close. If I had a winch over there, there is a tree that kind of stays locked in place. That was able to bump my front left axle up. The truck then started climbing under its own steam, but until the rear axle basically got to the same rock. And they're just doing the same thing, kind of skidding around, really. So, I uh, unpacked the loaf, jumped the loaf off. I was more just jumping the loaf off to potentially reduce the weight on the trailer, see what difference it actually did make. It wasn't really to use the loaf to pull the Tager up, but, I mean, look at him. He flies up the hill. He's goddamn professional. Uh, I rolled back a little bit to get a little bit of a run-up, but as the trailer starts trying to sort of jackknife itself because of the dolly axle, so I didn't get much of a run-up. But it was enough, uh, the front tyre kind of bumped itself over the rock. I even think probably the first rear axle maybe climbed up onto the rock. Used a winch there. I was trying to reach the trees in front of me, just to the left of like the blue marker, but the uh, winch was either grabbing those trees over to the left, and then it grabbed the loaf, which, like I said, I only just parked it up there. I didn't even have it on the right angle or anything. Started pressing the winch button, uh, and then I sort of realised halfway through, like, oh yeah, when I press the winch button, the loaf doesn't drive forward. But then when you let go of it, uh, let go of the winch button, the loaf's now actually trying to pull me. And yeah, I mean, near enough, what 80, 90 degree angle from where I want to be heading, really towards the blue square. But I mean, loaf, I see he's got some muscle. <laughs> like the guy said in that video, don't tussle with the muscle. Um, yeah, we got that horse. He hauls me up. Then yeah, the winch, again, I was trying to reach the trees in front, but it just keeps going either to the left or it went back to the loaf. I left him to it. I mean, look at him. Let him drop the hammer. And yeah, somehow at like a 90 degree angle. Still pulled me and a trailer up here. Got me high enough, and then now the Tager under its own steam. Yeah, so it's only really that rock kind of as you're going up that hill that's causes a bit of issue. But at least they have got solid trees there that you can actually get onto. Um, yeah. Still recommend. It's goddamn professional, though. And we made it up the hill. I did a little bit of editing there, but not a lot, really. Had the plan been to just, as soon as I get there, disconnect the loaf, send him to the top, and line him up properly, and use him as a, a, a like a mobile winch point to drag me up that hill, it, I probably would have got up there just about as quick as sort of going around the long way. But I will say, in fairness, the the long way isn't that long. You'd uh, get around it in like an extra 30 seconds or something, so I just kind of like going up that hill out of stubbornness just to sort of push the limits of it, see what the at what point the uh, the trucks want to tap out. Bit of a slower climb up here, even went down into low range, you see. When things are going well though, and the Tager was, Tager was uh, handling its business, so a kind of the impatience feeling doesn't kick in, and then I feel alright, just chilling, taking my time. It's all going well. So when the game trolls you, I'm just suddenly like, right, high gear, <laughs> high gear all the way, high gear, floor it, done. Uh, yeah, there's this little, it's kind of a shortcut, not much really. I could have followed the road along to the right of the screen and it just kind of loops back around. There is a ramped flatbed there that's tipped and got cargo knocked off it, but yeah, as you look on the map, this light is a little technically a little shortcut. Is that right? That's enough patience. Time for a bit more high gear. And then yeah, a little drive through the uh, the burnt forest mountains, which actually aren't that bad to be fair. Once you actually get up into them, the roads are for the most part you get little patches of like extra muddy sections, but. As you can see, ticking along in high gear pretty nicely. We'll take a sharp left here, so you 
preferably want to go a little bit wide on the corner if you can, just so you don't clip it on the inside, because that sharp corner of the rock on the inside looks like it'll be perfect to kind of snag your trailer and then as it pings off it'll flick over to the right. Hit a rough bit of mud there. It was nice though actually, because I sort of forgot how much the Tager eventually it will kick you out of high gear and say stolen but it's actually pretty lenient in fact yeah there's now was probably a good example like I drove in there it was just to the point where I was wheel spinning and there's no point in staying in the high but it doesn't just automatically kick you out it still kinda gives you the option to just wheel spin really and then yeah it just makes more sense to drop it down into auto. I will say this little patch here was obviously easily super mud if not getting up into like death mud because it was even a close call when I went into auto it was I had to think about it for a second on creeping forward still doable though just a bit of a slow patch but again that's not a problem gonna have a yeah, bit of a run up down the hill and the Tago it's got I mean it's got nice pace in the high gear because of the size of the tyres and everything, it all just works out pretty good. It sits under the speed in this game where you start to skid around and lose grip and all that, but quick enough that you, uh, yeah, start getting the job done. And then that's it. Pull up to this uh, water tower, drop off the consumable. It was a pain in the ass to make. Seven slots worth of cargo just to build that one little consumable. Get a little animation for this one. Uh, that's a water tower, so it, you can actually get water from there. It's not like one of those booms that you have to fill up first before you can use it. Um, yeah, not a lot of money for the mission, but it's the main thing just to get that unlocked so you can do the other contracts with the water. But yeah, anyway, uh, that's about it for today, though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf, because he is a goddamn professional. And uh, I'll be back soon.